This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance provides high quality instructor led training videos for desktop, IT, and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. I have some really great news for you. If you have data in another application, there's a great chance that you can bring it into Access and you don't have to retype because there's a fantastic tool tab, toolbar for you to use. Actually, they're not toolbars anymore. They're now called ribbons. But right here, the external data. Look at all of these choices for importing data. You can bring in from Excel, Access, ODBC, that's Object Database Connectivity, which is things like an SQL server any text file, an XML file, or any of these options as well. Whew, that's a lot, wouldn't you agree? Well, what if your data is somewhere and it's not behaving well? Maybe it's in a Word table and it's not behaving well. Copy it from the Word table, put it into Excel, and then let Excel bring it in because Excel is really great at manipulating and massaging data to make it look great inside of Access. So you simply decide where the data is found and you bring it in to access. Let's take a look at one using a text file. So someone had a list of information and they saved it as a text file so they could bring it into access. So you choose the, um, sorry, just click the button there for text file. And now I have the wizard that's going to step me through and say, what do you want to do? So I'll click on browse to go get the file. It's in this folder and there's my text file, my list of customers to import and I'll click on open. And now you decide what you want to do with it. Bring it in and put it in a brand new table or append this to an existing table. Now, if you append it, you have to have the same type of fields in the same order. Otherwise, you're going to get an error message when you import it. But if everything matches, that's fine. You can absolutely append. Or you can link the data by creating a linked table. Linked tables simply allow you to make changes in one location and the changes store in the other location. Totally what you need. I don't need to link anything, so I'm simply going to say import it into a brand new table. Okay. Well, now the wizard pops up. The wizard pops up and it says, here's what I see. Look at all this stuff. This is all the stuff I see out there, but let's convert it so Access can deal with it more effectively. So it wants to know if it's a delimited or if a fixed width file. Most are delimited. So if you go through the next step of this wizard and the delimited does not work, come back to this step and change it to fixed width. But I'm pretty sure this one's delimited. And then we'll click on next. And when you get to next, it says, well, this looks pretty good. What would you think? Yeah, that looks great because it's a comma delimited file. If it were a tab delimited file, you'd have to change it here. You see, you can see in the example what type of a file it is because it won't look right until you make the selection for the proper item. So mine is a comma delimited file. And scroll all the way to the top here. It wants to know if my first row contains field names. It doesn't appear as though this first row has any field names in it, so I won't check the box. But if you turn the box on, it says some of this just doesn't look right. I'm, I'm going to assign field names, but look what happens. That's not proper because these are actually items for a record, a row of information. So I'm going to turn off first row contains field names, but in your real world, it's very likely that your first row does contain field names. So no, mine does not. Now, before I go on to the next step, I want to go down here to the bottom left, this advanced button. Always check out extra buttons when you see them. So for instance, it's giving me choices on how I bring things in, like the language and down here, what do I want for delimiters and the date and time format? What do I want for the date delimiter? If on my date, I don't want that slash, I'd rather have a dash. I simply change it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and leave the defaults, but the point is you can change things. And then at the bottom, because my fields don't have field names, mine are going to be named field one, field two, field three, field four, very generic. But if there's a field that I do not want, I just skip it. For instance, I don't want this second column, so field two, I'm going to skip field two. I don't want that one. And let's see, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't want six either. So I'm going to skip field six. Now you see the benefit of having field names? It's much easier for you. And then I say, once I finish this, I'll say okay to that. And so now it's 
changed, well, it, visually it's not changing anything on the screen, but it's changed the rules that my data is following. And I'll click on next. And now this is where you can go field by field and assign different kinds of information. So for instance, field five, this is the person's first name. So instead of field five, let's name it first name. And is it indexed? No. What data type? This is right. And look, you can also skip here, do not import here. So let's do last name. I'm not going to do all of these, but I just want you to see how easy it is. Last name. This is the company name, right? Because this is a list of, cu of customers. And I do want to index this one. And duplicates are OK. Also, I wanted to index the last name, because the benefit of indexing is it helps you when you sort, helps you when you're searching, helps queries run more effectively. So if there are fields and you know you'll be sorting or searching on that field a lot, index it because that helps greatly. And then on this screen, you see it already says, do not import fields. So you would just go through each column, establishing the look that you like. And if one of these columns is a date field, you can change the date format as well. So we'll go on to next. And once we say next, it says, what do you want to do about the primary key? Do you want access to add it? Nope, I want to choose it. So choose my own primary key. It's going to start with the first field, and that's what I want, is field one. Now, had I, in the previous step, renamed every one of these fields, that would not say field one. It would say probably customer ID, something like that. Or no, I don't even want a primary key, but I do. I want a primary key, and I do want it to be field one. And then I'll go on to next, and next says, what do you want to call this? We'll call it, I'm going to start it with an A so it shows up at the top, a list of customers. If you want to analyze your table, choose this check mark and you'll go through the table analyzer. I do not want to analyze my table, so I'll just click on finish. It's thinking. Now it says, hey, would you like to save these steps? Because later, it's possible that you might be importing another text field and then you don't have to redo all of the rules. Sure. If you want to click on save, you just tell it what you want to call it. So you identify what the name is. So I'm going to say text data imported for customer list. And then you could give it a description if you wanted to. And, oh, I love this too, the Create Outlook task. If this is something that you regularly do, this is a task that happens regularly, you can create an Outlook task. It'll actually go out and put a reminder on your calendar for you. So the reminder will pop up when it's time to accomplish this task. Is that nice application integration? I love that. All right, I'm going to click on Save Import. And now what happened? Well, my table imported, so let's go find it. So over here, um, a list of customers. And there is the list of customers that I imported, that I brought in to my database with my import wizard. So it's really fast and really easy to go grab information. Let's do one really quickly with Excel. If I go grab an Excel file, let me go browse. There's my access for import. I'm just going to put it in a brand new table, say OK. And look, it says, oh, I can understand this. I can read this. The first row does contain column headings. And I'll go on to next. You've seen this, right? You can change the field names. You can change the items just by clicking. I like all of these. Well, we've seen this, too. I want to choose the primary key, and I do want it to be the ID field. We'll go on to next. What do you want to call this? A new Excel import. And then finish. I'm not going to save these because you know how to do that. But if you do this regularly, again, you would save the steps and then choose close. Now let me close this. And on my table, a new Excel import. We'll just open it up and take a look. And there's the new table that I just brought in to access. So as you can see, by using the ribbon for external data and the import and link segment here, it's very fast to bring data into your access database. The benefit for you, you don't have to rekey things, and you can set up your tables as you finish up those wizards. It's a fantastic feature. So next time, no more copying and pasting, no more retyping or rekeying. Use your important link features. Let's take a quick moment for a pop quiz question. Which type of files might be imported? A, access. B, Excel. C, text. D, all of the above. D, 
D is the proper answer here because you can import Access, Excel, and text files using the proper tools in the import ribbon. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.